You are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its taste, how can its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything, but is thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. No one, after lighting a lamp, puts it under a bushel basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you. You may be seated. Have you ever tasted salt that isn't salty? Or have you ever turned on the lamp and then put it under the couch? That's Jesus trying to do a stand-up routine, glad that he had a day job. Yeah, he was trying to, little, trying to sh- uh, share a little bit of laughter and tell a little bit of a, a, a joke there. You are, you are the light of the world. Congratulations. You are the salt of the earth. Isn't that good news? For a number of years, I, um, I got to do something pretty fun. I was a narrator in an outdoor drama down in the Greenbrier Valley. I was a uh, narrator in Writers of the Flood. Uh, we performed that several years right on the bank of the Greenbrier in a, an amphitheater there. And Writers of the Flood was adapted from a, a book by the same name, Um, written by a fellow called W.E. Blackhurst. He was a teacher in the Greenbrier Valley and wrote the story. And the story was essentially the story of loggers and business people and families who in the late 19th century after the Civil War moved to the Greenbrier Valley, logged and built towns and communities and built families and all of that sort of thing. And What was especially fun for me is when I would be out narrating, I could, you know, the light would be shining right in my eyes, but I could see the audience sitting in the amphitheater in that direction, those directions. And I would look, and there would be these elderly grandchildren and great-grandchildren of the characters who were in the audience. And I would see huge smiles on their faces and occasionally a nasty nasty Kleenex would come out of a pocket and dab the eyes and wipe the nose as we told the story of their ancestors. It it would be like we'd perform this play and we would say, here they are. Here's your great-grandma and your great-grandpa. Here's the back-breaking work that they did. Here's the trouble that they got into. Here are the communities that they built that you now live in and the families that they started that are your families. Here's their character. Here is your legacy. We would have a receiving line after the play, and folks who wanted to would come up to folk, the folks who had performed and shake hands and say a few words. And there they would come with their walkers <laughs> and their canes and their artificial hips and knees. And they would grab us by the hands and smile so big and sometimes shed a tear and say, thank you, thank you, thank you. That was my family. I'm from such and such creek. Yeah. And I could feel that they were not only offering their expression, but in some ways I felt like they were asking a question. This is my legacy. This is what I've received. What kind of legacy am I building? What kind of legacy am I passing on? What kind of story is going to be told about me? 
one of my favorite films is a film by Robin Williams, Dead Poets Society. Anybody seen that? Okay, you're showing your age. Make all the young folks go home and get on YouTube or Hulu or whatever and watch Dead Poets Society. It is a fabulous movie, is it not? And they mumble under the breast, yes, yes, yes. Fabulous movie. Let me show you a clip. Words and language, no matter what anybody tells you, words and ideas can change the world. Now, see that look in Mr. Pitt's eye, like 19th century literature, has nothing to do with going to business school or medical school, right? Maybe. Mr. Hopkins, you may agree with them, thinking, yes, we should simply study our Mr. Pritchard and learn our rhyme and meter and go quietly about the business of achieving other ambitions. I have a little secret for you. Huddle up. Huddle up! We don't read and write poetry because it's cute. We read and write poetry because we are members of the human race. And the human race is filled with passion. And medicine, law, business, engineering, these are noble pursuits and necessary to sustain life. But poetry, beauty, romance, love, these are what we stay alive for. To quote from Whitman, O me, O life, of the questions of these recurring, of the endless trains of the faithless, of cities filled with the foolish, what good amid these, O me, O life? Answer, that you are here, that life exists and identity, that the powerful play goes on and you may contribute a verse. Powerful play goes on, and you may contribute a verse. What will your verse be? The powerful play goes on, and you may contribute a verse. What will your verse be? Legacy, impact. You heard read for you, Steve read for us from the Sermon on the Mount. Some of the most beautiful words ever spoken, impactful words. And Jesus is speaking, giving this sermon, primarily to a group of people who have been left out of a lot. If you read the uh, historical context of that period of Galilee, poor folk were essentially taxed to death. They were taxed by the Romans and they were taxed by the temple. They were losing their farmlands and those who were taxing them were buying their farmlands and then letting them share crop and pay taxes on, on the crops that they were, they were raising. It was a hideous system. And so many people, including Jesus, family, extended family, were folks who were being left out of what was happening. They were unimportant socially to what was going on. They were living bad news lives. And so Jesus, in the Sermon on the Mount, brings some good news to their bad news lives. Part of what Jesus does in the Sermon on the Mount is he takes away part of the bad news and replaces it with some very good news. There are some things that won't change. The news will still be bad, but Jesus is going to give them some good news that will transform them and even the bad news that they are experiencing. And what Jesus says to them is, you are the light of the world. You are the salt of the earth. Who would light a lamp and then put it under the couch? Have you ever tasted salt that isn't salty? If it is, you just kind of throw it out. But have you ever tasted that kind of salt? You, uh, you are. 
So in a culture and in a time and in a system that said to them, excuse my English, you ain't, Jesus says to them, you are. And in saying that, he empowers them to know that if they can live into who they are, they will leave a legacy of saltiness, tastiness, of light in the presence of darkness. If they can live into the, who they are, they will leave a legacy. They'll build a legacy. You who are the poor, you are the light, you are the salt. You who are grieving, you are the light, you are the salt. You who are the persecuted, you are the light, you are the salt. And if that's true, certainly, you who are the comfortable, you're leaving an impact, you're creating a legacy. You who are laughing now, you're making an imprint, you're leaving a story. You who are living in peace, certainly you, certainly you are having an impact. But I want you to notice this about what Jesus says. When he says, you are, is he speaking of individuals or is he talking in the plural? Both. He's using the plural, which means individuals together, y'all are the light, y'all are the salt. You as a community, as a body, you're the light, you're the salt. One of the great, great things about being in this part of the world, in this part of, of West Virginia, is you can get by a river in a valley and you can sit by a river and look up at the majestic mountains and be in awe, right? One of the things I love to do is get by a river, listen to it, and feel the breeze and look up at the mountains. If I can do that and have a sandwich and a little pie, then my day is good. You know what I'm talking about? You sit there and, and you see this, sometimes it's a tiny river or creek, and you realize that this tiny body Russian water coming down through this valley has helped to contribute to, to the majesty that is around you. If you ever go fishing in the trough, you can be down in a valley where nobody can get to except the eagles and the fish in the water and somebody on a kayak. And you look up and you go, oh my goodness, this body of water carved this majestic valley. One of the things that Jesus was saying, using the plural, is y'all are drops of water having your own impact but put us together and we are the river of God. We are the light of the world. We are the salt in the dish. We are together going to leave a legacy and to make a difference. Can you see that Jesus is not just talking about your life and the decisions that you make in your family and in your career, but he's talking to a group of people and he says, if you can believe, if you can experience 
who you are as salt and light, you're going to cut a legacy in this world that others can look at and be in awe of. Folks are going to see what you're doing and they are going to, as he says it, give, give glory to your Father in heaven when you know that you're the river and not just a drop. Let me tell you about a, big of le- a bit of legacy that you are enjoying this morning and you probably won't even know it. This is the main sanctuary here at Suncrest. There's another one that was used for many years. It goes back to about the 1840s. It's over there in the parking lot called Drummond Chapel. Have you noticed that little white church there? Some of you have been in it. Started in about the 1840s, and whoop, we moved over here a few years later. There's a picture over there on the wall, several pictures, in fact. One picture will have some bullet points and will tell some stories. I want to read to you one of the stories about legacy that's over there on the walls. It's, it's, it's given the title, Barefoot Students. Has anybody read that? Do you know what I'm talking about? Mary has. Mary knows it. I get to share it with all of you. I'm going to read it to you. Barefoot students, Sunday school superintendent, and Mrs. Evans, upon learning other families' children were staying away from Sunday school because they had no shoes, decreed their own children would go to Sunday school barefoot, thus soon solving the shoe problem and the Sunday school attendance problem. Can you hear the legacy that you've received, that I've received? This is a community, a church community, and part of what we do here over and over again is we try to take down down barriers. We try to go an extra mile to welcome. And to incorporate us into a river. Now, would there be anything inside of our minds, inside of our habits, that would be an obstacle to us being the river, being the light, being the salt, being the community that carves a legacy? Would there be anything inside of us? Would there be anything outside of us that we have to overcome together that would prevent us from leaving a legacy of salt and light and river? Jesus announces to the folks that he shares this message with, you are having an impact. You are impacting God. You are salt and light. You don't get to choose whether or not you have an impact but you do get to choose what kind of impact you are building together. A fellow by the name of James Campbell said, while it is well enough to leave footprints on the sands of time, it is even more important to make sure they point in a commendable direction. Imagine this, a number of years from now, let's say 40 years from now, someone finds an ancient thing called an iPad 
Maybe it's on a wall somewhere flashing pictures. I don't know. It's dusty. And they see a picture of you. And they say, that is my legacy. They gave me something that I have received. And I am building my own legacy with my brothers and sisters in Christ. And together we are the light of the world. Together we are the salt of the earth. Together we are a river, a mighty river of the Holy Spirit leaving our mark in this community. I am having an impact. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Friends, I'm going to invite you to uh, use this next opportunity to meet with God. Our ushers are going to pass out our, uh, our offering plates. There are ways to give that are on the screen. It might be that uh, during this time, you want to acknowledge the legacy that you've received and pray about what kind of legacy you and I are building together. line is six feet in the ground in a race you can't win just slow it down in a world full of happy life when you do somebody wrong make it right don't hide in the dark you the born to shine in a world full of happy life it's hard to live when you just see black and white in a world full of hate, be a light.
Friends, I will invite you to come to this table where we, we see a bit of the legacy of Jesus. It's a legacy of self-giving. And when we come to the table to receive the self-giving of Jesus, we're inspired to build our own legacy of self-giving. Pastor Matt and I are going to pray over the elements here and we'll invite you to come and to receive. As you come to receive, uh, we're still practicing communion um, as safely as we can, so you'll receive a little bag. You can kneel here and pray or return to your pew and pray. But join me and Pastor Matt in prayer. Oh God, we lift up our hearts to you and we give you our thanks and praise it's our joy to give thanks to you. Your spirit has been moving, moving over the face of the waters of creation. Your spirit has been moving in us. You created us in your image. You breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away from you, your spirit and your love kept moving. And with all of heaven, we praise you. We call you holy, holy, holy Lord. You are a God of power and might. Heaven and earth is full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. At his baptism, the Spirit descended on him and filled him with your Spirit, and you declared him your beloved Son. Your Spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. Jesus fed the sick, fed the hungry, he healed the sick, he ate with sinners. Through his baptism, through the, his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church and delivered us from slavery to sin and death and made with us a new covenant that we might be your people. On the night which Jesus gave his life for ours, he took bread, he gave thanks to you, he broke the bread and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you, do this and remember me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, he gave thanks to you, he gave it to his disciples and said, drink from, this, all, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. And so, in remembrance of these mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving that we might join our lives with Jesus we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Oh God, pour out your good Holy Spirit upon us and upon these simple gifts on the table. We pray that they would be the body and blood, the very life of Christ for us. And we pray that we would be with Christ, a mighty river of light and salt saved by Jesus and empowered to leave a legacy. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at this heavenly banquet. Through your son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. As you are ready, would you come to receive?
shine all around. Let my heart overflow with passion for your name. Let my life be a song revealing who you are. For you are salt and light. Oh, the love that set me free. You bring hope to those in need. You have rocking chair that is in the front of the sanctuary. Uh, this was given uh, in memory of Neil Snyder. Uh, maybe some of you knew Neil. Neil passed away in the midst of the pandemic. Uh, he was one of the kindest, most compassionate, joyful people I've ever met. Neil told me I could call him anytime I had a question except when he was watching The Price is Right. Uh, <laughs> He, I, I got to know Neil when he worked here um, supervising one of our MSW students, and Neil was just always someone who was marked with great kindness. Um, I miss him a lot. Um, Neil spent his time in retirement rocking babies in the early learning center, and so he would go downstairs and uh, rock babies when staff needed some help. And so this chair is a beautiful rocking chair that will be a, a, a monument to Neil's legacy of kindness and grace and compassion, and it will go downstairs. So we're gonna just say a, a word of prayer over it as we give thanks for Neil's life. Would you join me in that prayer? Uh, God, thank you for the life of your servant, Neil. Thank you for the ways that he lay, leaves behind a legacy of compassion and care and kindness Thank you for the ways that you have been present to us through him. We pray that this chair would be a place where babies are rocked and children are comforted. And as they receive the gift of your spirit, Neil's legacy of care and compassion and love would live on in them and through them. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to share with you some announcements. You'll see on the screen our weekly worship check-in document. You can uh, go there in your web browser, bit.ly slash suncrestum. If you're joining us in person or online, we'd love to hear from you and say hello. 
If this is your first time joining us, again, whether you're in person or online, you can text us, 304-554-9293. We'd love to say hi. We're ready for our, our ministry fair. It's in the narthex. There's opportunities for people to sign up to be greeters, groundskeepers, technology helpers, ushers. There's ways to be involved and to use your gifts to serve the church. You can stop by in the narthex and sign up to help in one of those areas of ministry. After you leave, you can go out to the pavilion for our, uh, our picnic. We've got a, a picnic happening as we celebrate Pentecost Sunday, which is the birthday of the church. So head out. We've got hot dogs, and um, the bounce house is up, and I know there's lots of you that are excited about that. Looking at you, Dave Jacqueline, you're pumped about the bounce house. I can tell. Head out. Jump in the bounce house, have some fun, be there for um, some fun and fellowship. Kids, as you head out, there are noisemakers in, in, the, in, the, in the lobby that you can take out with you. Um, why we give kids noisemakers, I don't know, but it's what we decided to do, so congratulations, parents. Um, as you leave this morning as well, we want to make sure you know about a couple other things. Uh, my last Sunday here is June 19th, so that's in a couple weeks, two weeks from now. We will only have one service on that day, a 1030 service. It'll be a blended service. It's my last Sunday to preach and share with you, and then I think there's a reception following that. But please make note of the fact that there's only one service that morning. Um, when you leave, you'll see some flowers that we brought from the Abundant Life Greenhouse. These are, these are not normal flowers. These are special flowers because they are recovery slash resurrection flowers, a couple weeks ago, our greenhouse got too hot and we thought it killed everything and then we nursed these flowers back to life and they are gorgeous. This is good news for you if you're one of these people that kills all the flowers you touch. These have already experienced death and come back, so you're gonna be fine. So pick one up uh, on your way out. We'll have them out there and you can purchase one to take home. I'm gonna invite uh, Maddie Wheeler to come forward and to... to um, offer a presentation, and then Alicia Cox and some of the kids are going to come forward as well. Go to be salt and light. Go to leave a legacy of hope, of kindness, of love. Go that we might be a part of what God is doing here and throughout the world. Go with that hope and that peace. Amen. Great week, guys.